What's up everyone? Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. Today we'll dig into a popular subject with those who have or want a domain name and that's setting up your custom email address. One thing I've learned from managing client websites is that emails, it's a distributed mess. I mean they use all types of services including Comcast, Outlook, Yahoo, Thunderbird, AOL. I personally use Gmail and I decided early on that I wanted one Gmail inbox for everything. I didn't want to have to log in to all these separate accounts. So today I'll show you how to create your custom domain email within Gmail. And you can do this from multiple addresses. So I'm on the cPanel page here, which is a widely used web hosting control panel. And this is through HostGator web hosting. So I've been using cPanel for pretty much the entire decade. So if you're using another service, you might need to use your web hosting's custom email settings. If your hosting company does use cPanel, you can normally log in from yourdomain.com slash cPanel. Just type that into the browser and it should redirect you. And if that's not the case, then I would just look into your web hosting company and see how you can log in. They might have a unique URL. So that's where I am right now and I collapsed all these other sections just to leave the email section open. And I just want to mention one thing and that's most of the time you can get away with just using an email forwarder instead of an account. So what this means is email will not be hosted on your web server. Anything that comes in is just going to forward to whatever address you put into the forwarder. And the only downside is that you, you aren't able to send as that email address. So say you forward to a Gmail account and somebody sends you a custom domain email, you reply to that and the reply is going to come from your Gmail account. So that's up to you whether you're okay with a forwarder or not. But if you are, I would just go into forwarders here and you could just click the add forwarder button, create a custom domain email address that you can put on a business card or wherever you want and it'll just forward to your personal inbox that you use so you don't have to learn anything new. We're going to create an email address just to show you how to do that. So we're going to go into the email accounts section and click the create button and this is where we'll set our email address. So I'm just going to do ray at raydelvecchio.com. We'll set our password. You want to make sure you have a strong password for this. And this is where you can set the storage space. So depending on whether you have unlimited space or not, you can just say unlimited. And obviously when your hosting package is getting towards its storage limit, you'll probably get a notification on that if you have it set up. And then it looks like they do the plus addressing on here just the same way that Gmail does it. If you don't know about that, you can add a plus and then anything you want, any little tag you want after that. And it works for Gmail and it looks like you can set it up to work here. But since we're going to forward everything to Gmail, or not forward it, but set it up within Gmail, we, I don't really have worry about this. I'm just going to leave the setting as is. And you can also send yourself a welcome email, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to do this through cPanel. It was actually on the prior page. We'll go back to that. So I'm going to click the create button. And here is where we can click the connect devices page. And this is going to show us all the settings that we'll need to get set up within Gmail. And you can see here, if you want to use services other than Gmail, you can do that. They give you pages that you can find the instructions for it. But down here is what we're looking for. We want to use the secure SSL settings. And so we have our, our username, which is our email address, password, which we should have saved. You have the settings for the in, incoming server, which is email that's coming to you, and outgoing, which is email that you send. So this is what you have to set up within Gmail to send as your email address, as opposed to sending as your Gmail address. And before we go into Gmail, we're going to check out one other thing, and that's webmail. Once you set up an email account within cPanel, you can access it online without setting up this mail client and just like the cPanel you should be able to access that from a custom URL which is yourdomain.com slash webmail and we're gonna log in here they also give you a way to set this up within iPhone, iPad and they give you a couple different mail clients Horde and Roundcube it looks like this is open. I, I'm assuming they're both open source. The Roundcube says that it's open source webmail. I used to use this way back in the day, but like I said, I transitioned over to Gmail. Now I do everything through that. 
But let's just check out the email client that they offer here, which is Roundcube. And you can see the interface. It's a very simple email inbox. And we're going to get a verification email here from Gmail. So we have to keep this open. So let's go over to Gmail. And right now, I'm just searching for email from this address that we're going to test out. So there's no, no matches here. We need to go into the settings. So you want to click the gear icon over here and click settings. And you want to go over to the accounts and import section. And these are the two settings that we're going to work with. The send mail as, this is where you can set up your outgoing email. And then here, check mail from other accounts. This is where you set up your incoming email. Let's start with the previous section. We'll add another email address. And this is where you set the name and the email address. And there's one option here, which it took me like the first like six times I set this up, I had no idea really what this meant. And they created a much better help page that shows it, this treat as an alias checkbox. They give you the two examples, and that's if you have the treat as an alias checkbox marked off. The example is you own two email addresses and you want mail sent from either of them to arrive in the same Gmail inbox, which that's what I want to do. And then when you send mail, you get to choose which one you send from. If it's unchecked, that means that you actually check the incoming mail another place other than Gmail, but you just want the convenience of being able to send from Gmail at that address. So I always check this off because like I said, I want all incoming and outgoing email to be set up through Gmail. So I'll paste in the email address and we'll go to the next step. And this is where we configure our settings. So let's go back to cPanel here. And for outgoing, you can see that our mail server is mail.radel.geo.com, which this is again common for cPanel. It's mail.yourdomain.com. And then the port number is 465. So we'll go back to this page here and we'll put on the username, which is the full email address, the password, and we'll select port 465 from the drop down menu. And we leave this checked off. We want the SSL to secure the connection. And we'll add the account and see if this works. And this is where we'll probably get that verification email. Google just wants to confirm that you own that email address so that you can either click on a link within that email or they give you a code that you can copy and paste. I'm going to go back to the webmail app and see if that arrived. So I'll refresh our messages and if all goes well, we'll have ourselves a confirmation email. And there it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the link in this to activate it and we'll move on to the next step which is setting up our incoming email. Now I'll click the add a mail account button to set up our incoming email. Just got to plug in our email address. We're going to use POP3. So normally when you do incoming email, you have the option of IMAP or POP3. And the main difference is that, and I could be explaining this very too, way too simply, but IMAP is a sync and POP3 is a download. So what that means is if you do POP3 and Gmail downloads an email, it's not going to be available on your webmail. And we should be able to test that out. But I think POP3 is the way to do it if you're going to use Gmail for everything. And it looks like they don't even give you the option to do IMAP. Other mail clients probably do. But like I said, I haven't used another mail client in many years. So we'll set this up. And we're going to go back to the cPanel settings to see what we need. And here for the incoming, we have the same server, mail.raydelvecchio.com. And then the POP3 port is 995. So we'll paste in the username and password, which again is the full email address for the username. We already have the mail server populated with the correct domain name. And here we just select port 995. And it looks like here they give you the option to leave a copy even with the pop settings. But I'm not going to do that. I will click always use a secure connection. And they give you the option to automatically label incoming emails. So this is a great way to organize if you're using multiple accounts. Or you can skip it if it's more of just a maintenance thing. You know, you're getting messages that aren't urgent but 
you just check on every now and then you can skip the inbox or what I like to do is just create more custom email filters within Gmail after I set all this up so let's add the account and it looks like we got set up correctly I just gotta go back to the Gmail settings and verify that and there we go it looks like it's checking the mail now and like I said we should be able to check to see if it's downloaded I should get that Gmail verification email that we saw a minute ago on the webmail within my Gmail account here and it should also disappear from the webmail because it was downloaded and there you go it just finished up here and it says that it was last checked zero minutes ago one mail was fetched which is that Gmail one and the, the last note about this is um, the pop servers don't update or they don't sync you know automatically so you might get sent an email and it might take a couple minutes or whatever to download I don't know exactly how they determine the frequency but if for some reason you're expecting an email and you're not getting it you might just need to go in here and click the check mail now button to run this manually and let me go over to the webmail and now we see that there's nothing in our inbox this is empty so everything is working correctly and I'm gonna do one more test I'm gonna test from an email address I have on my iPhone and I just sent that and you can see both the emails here the Gmail confirmation from before and the email that I just sent and if I click into this and hit the reply button we should be sending from our custom domain email and there you go we're sending from Ray at RayDelvecchio.com and then likewise you can go into your settings and create a custom signature for each email address that you send from so that's all I got for this video today it took me a lot of experience to to kind of put this together in such a simple way and I hope it was helpful for you this has been a big question that I haven't really touched on in a lot of my videos so this was a lot of fun to put together and if you'd like to get set up with a custom domain email address I highly recommend that you go ahead and set up a web hosting package as soon as possible and I'll link up a video where I go through my favorite web hosts right here I'm listing HostGator which is the most affordable and they're the one that I've used for the longest I've been a HostGator customer for over 10 years now they've treated me great I've had very few problems with dozens of websites on their hosting servers this entire tutorial was going through cPanel on HostGator so if you set up one year of shared hosting with HostGator they're currently offering a free domain name go to websiteprofitcourse.com slash HostGator and if you get the HostGator's checkout page in another way, you can apply my coupon code WPC3. That'll give you a deal better than what they advertise. It's going to be 45% off one year of hosting. And you can register up to three years, which I recommend if you want to get the best monthly price. But one year is a good middle ground where you'll get that free domain name along with the most affordable monthly price for that term. And then if you'd like to take it one step further and build a website, I put together a free website training series for beginners that includes a little bit of a more detailed explanation of how web hosting works and then I also go through how to build a website with WordPress which is one of the most popular content management systems out there if you go through my YouTube channel you'll see that I'm a big advocate for WordPress and I use it for every website that I build it's the standard if you're gonna create a blog so I highly recommend that if you're going to build a website that you do it with WordPress and I will help you out to get that set up. So go to WebsiteProfitCourse.com slash beginner to sign up to that free training. I'll also include a link to that in the top right here as well as the description below. And last but not least, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you found it helpful. If you have any questions on email hosting or maybe you know your hosting company does things a little bit differently leave a comment below I like to learn from you guys like I said I, once I find something that works I tend to stick with it that's why I've, I've based most of my business over the last 10 years on HostGator web hosting and WordPress with that said I've heard of so many cool services through my subscribers that I probably would have never found on my own so don't be afraid to leave a comment below or if you do sign up for this website training if you have any questions or you want to pass anything along to me you can reply to any one of my emails and I want to thank you again for taking the time to watch this entire video and make sure you subscribe up 
So you can join me on the next one. Thank you, everybody, and have a great day.